Hey guys, so today I wanted to do a get ready with me. I've been doing my makeup lately on camera and haven't been really chatting about anything. Um, there's just so much going on outside of YouTube and things that I haven't talked about and I will get into the, the most of it soon, uh, but I wanna talk about some of it today. We could just sit down together, do our makeup. I did my makeup the other day. I used the Pure Form one and I used highlighter and God, my skin looked so unbelievably beautiful. I have been really foregoing highlighter for like the last I don't know, month or two. I go through ebbs and flows and I didn't want that highlighted look, but something about it just looked so beautiful and my skin just looked hydrated and plump. It just looked plump. You know, you have those plump days. Well, <laughs> every day lately is a plump day. I'm not gonna wear lashes today either because that's something that um, I've been wearing lashes lately, but I did a day where I did like a really beautiful kind of deep smoky eye and I just used mascara and I thought it looked really pretty. It kind of understated, but I don't know. I just feel like sometimes I get kind of stuck in a lashes rut where I'm using them all the time and I love lashes, don't get me wrong. Lashes are probably my favorite part of makeup because they just transform the entire look. But sometimes it's fun to just not use them and see what the look looks like that way. And so I'm gonna be doing a no lashes makeup look today. I'm also gonna be doing a Savage X Fenty try-on haul for you guys today. If you don't know who Savage X Fenty is, I've been working with them off and on for the last year plus. And they are a lingerie company. They sell lingeries, bras, bralettes, robes, etc. They have so many different items on the site. I love Savage X Fenty because they have very inclusive sizing. I've been able to find things that fit me really well, that are incredibly comfortable, and that also make me feel really good. Uh, especially we're just kind of in the house lately and not kind of, and it's really easy to fall into the rut of not getting ready, not putting on nice clothing, not feeling good about yourself. I almost just like wanna show people my underwear. I don't, especially because there's nobody to show. Hello, quarantine. I mean, there's somebody to show. <laughs> exactly. They have a program called the Extra VIP program. And when you sign up for that, it's gonna have you take a quick style quiz and it's gonna kind of figure out sort of what styles you like. And then it'll suggest styles for you based on that quiz. Right now they have an offer going on. You'll get 50% off of any items when you sign up for your first Extra VIP order. Plus you can get bras from $15, bralettes from $10 and undies from $7. There's so many styles to choose from. My favorite robe ever is from Savage X Fenty. I've talked to you guys about it before. They add new styles all the time and I've been able to find things that are really colorful to a lot more neutrals and basics and everything in between. So I'm going to do a little quick try on haul for you guys and show you some really cute stuff I got. So this is the unlined bra in spicy red. So cute. It's really bright neon color. I really, really like it. And you can see just how nicely Savage X Fenty fits. You see how it just hugs me so well. There's no gap. There's no like looseness right here and that is so so rare for me even though there's no padding they offer enough support and structure that i feel like they look padded but they're more comfortable it's not thick or bulky i just love it this one is the savage x cotton jersey bralette and this is in the color citrine yellow and oh these bralettes are everything. I got this one in a size a little too small for me. I would size up in this one for me. This is in a size XL. I would honestly go to a 1X, 2X even. These are so comfortable in everyday wear and still give me enough support even with sizing up. This still fits me 100% and I will totally wear it. I just feel that it could end up covering a little bit more if I got one size up. But I love these bralettes. I get more use out of them than anything else from Savage X Fenty. And I love this color so much. Again, this is citrine yellow and it is so cute. This is the Savage X Cotton Jersey Bralette in the shade Pink Highlighter. And this one has the little Savage X logo on it. And I just love these so much. I wanted to show you a different color. And honestly, these are a staple. Ones I wear more than anything else. And they come in a ton of different colors. I have them in black, gray, pink, yellow, tons. So love this guy. All right, and this is the unlined bra in the Rainbow Stars Ombre print. I got really colorful stuff this time because I honestly, I usually default to blacks, grays, things like that, but I just wanted to go a little bit more colorful because it's that time of year and I'm tired of just being my basic bitch self. So here is this one. Again, love the unlined bras. It goes bralettes and unlined bras for me. Those are my top two. And then the robe, you guys know about the robe. I don't need to keep talking about the robe, but if you haven't tried the Savage X robe, I'm not just saying this. I would say it a thousand times, sponsored video or not, best robe ever sweatshirt sleeves, hood, perfect length. So cute, unlined, so it's really comfortable, soft, 
but it has enough support. It does have an underwire, but it doesn't have any padding and I just love this one so much and I think it's so cute. If you guys are interested in checking out anything from Savage X Fenty, I'm gonna have the link in the description of this video. And I thank you so much to Savage X Fenty for partnering with me and sponsoring this video. And now we're gonna move on to a look where I, I don't know that I've done a no lashes. Have I ever done one? <laughs> Okay, so I've already moisturized. I put on the um, Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I'm gonna go in with the Pure Foreign one. And this is what I did the other day. I didn't go super light with it. Some days I really wanna go really light. And then some days I'm like, I need the coverage. And uh, the other day I put on quite a bit and it looked really beautiful. I put it on with a beauty blender and I mean, I'm not like, I mean, I definitely am. So I took, that's the color MN6. I could definitely go in with just one shade. I already have these ones, so I wanted just to use them. Um, and this is LN2. And I just mix a little bit because the, the MN6 is it's just a little bit too deep for me. I'm gonna use my ColourPop sponge. I don't know which one this is. It's the silicone. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's got like a little silicone core or something. It's weird. It looks kind of dirty. I just washed it. I don't know if I mentioned it here on YouTube or if you guys just saw it on Instagram, but my cat was just not doing well. This is Mad Eye, Maddie. He's just not looking good at all. He was acting really weird. His breath was really, really bad. He has resorptive lesions, so his teeth get like, they're his really, really bad teeth. He needs to get them out. I've mentioned though that I can't do that because he has asthma and putting him under anesthesia is extremely risky because he has lower airway disease. So you put him under anesthesia and it's just risky that he might die under anesthesia. And that could literally make me sob and cry right here, right now, just thinking about not having him. So the doctor has advised that we just hold off as long as we can because it's just really risky to put him under. I've known that, but I brought him into the vet the other day because he was like running away from me. He was just acting weird, odd behavior. Like Maddie doesn't run away from me. He doesn't act skittish around me. But every time I would approach him, he was like running. And I was like, what the heck? That's bizarre behavior. So I took him into the vet that day. I'd called and I was like, yeah, this is weird. I need to get him in. And he refused his breakfast. I tried to feed him and he wouldn't eat it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> This is not normal. So I took him in, got his blood work done. The doctor checked his mouth and everything. And he was like, yeah, his mouth has like an infection in there. So we got him started on antibiotics that day. And we did his blood work that day. Every time I bring Maddie in, I get his blood work done. I get his blood work done a minimum of twice a year. If I have to get it more, I get it more. So I got his blood work done and he got it maybe like seven months ago as well. And everything was fine. And then when this time I got it done, I got his results a couple days later and his kidney values were elevated into like kidney disease range. The doctor said, don't freak out yet. It could be dehydration. Bring him in and we're gonna get a urine sample and see what's going on and see if it's dilute. That is cause for concern for kidney disease, which is exactly what Snickers died from last year. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was super traumatic for me. I brought him in and we got a urine sample and got the results back a couple days later and it was dilute and it had protein in his urine. And the doctor was like, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's kidney failure. And I'm like, I just, it was like my world came crumbling down. I'm not exaggerating, like could not be worse news for me. It was my worst fear because he is the love of my life. Like Matt, I is the actual love of my life. Other than my husband, obviously he's my baby, but he's such an angel. I've had him since 2012. Well, I believe. And um, he's my son, like he's my baby. I love him more than anything. He's such a good boy. He's literally laying right here next to me as I'm filming right now. He is such an incredibly good boy. By the way, this is the Hourglass um, Ambient Lighting Edit Ghost Palette. And this is the bronzer shade from that palette. But he is such an incredibly good boy. And I was heartbroken and crushed because I watched my other cat just wither away from that. Granted, she was 22 years old and we caught it later because she wasn't showing signs of anything at all. She was always hungry, always everything. But then by the time we caught hers, it was way more advanced and she's way older. And um, so I was just like inconsolable. I'm not exaggerating that I got the phone call on Saturday in the afternoon and I cried until Tuesday. Like I literally, could not stop crying. Every time I looked at him, I was just sobbing into his fur. I had a headache for like five days straight because it was just, it's devastating to think about him being so little and so good and it's not his fault and he doesn't know and he's just a little baby and then kidney disease again, which is incredibly common in cats. I was just crushed, you guys, like crushed beyond belief. And then the doctor called me. So he said, bring him in on Monday. We're gonna get a blood pressure check on him because he had protein in his urine and he was like, I suspect that he might have high blood pressure. Well, they did four blood pressure checks throughout the day and they did three checks at each time. So one check is three checks, you know what I'm saying? And they did four of those. And the first time his number was in good range, totally healthy blood pressure. Second and third time, elevated blood pressure. Fourth time, 
normal range. And they, again, get multiple checks per time because they wanna confirm that their numbers are correct. And so the doctor's like, I don't really suspect high blood pressure because he would have high blood pressure every time if that were the case, if he had hypertension. So he was like, I wonder if the protein in his urine was high. Sorry, this may be boring to some of you, but it was like, I wonder if the protein in his urine was high because he had maybe a urinary tract infection. We started him on the antibiotics and then tested his urine two days later and the bacteria was gone, but the protein was still there. And that's making it seem like he might have high blood pressure. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. So anyway, I started him on a kidney diet on Monday. Well, this was last Monday. I started him on a kidney diet and I started giving him, a, sometimes I give him like a phosphate binder, which I gave my other cat and can help lower their kidney values. And I switched him to a pill because every time I was giving him his liquid medicine, he was gagging and running away from me, he hated me. The improvement that I have seen in this kitty, I can't even describe. He has stopped being like skittish around me. His, he, he, he started that maybe over the last like couple of months, every time I would like see him, he would like, he would just get kind of skittish. And I'm like, that's not like you, dude. You're not skittish like that. That's gone away. He's not skittish around me anymore. So he was having to be on twice a day steroids for his asthma because he just could not breathe, you guys. Like he was having asthma attacks sometimes like five, six times a day. And that's a lot for him. He can't breathe during that, but that was making him sicker. It's not good for them to be on steroids that many times. So long, longest story long, is that I switched him to a pill and that is now once a day for steroids. I'm gonna knock on wood. Has not had an asthma attack in like a week and a half now, which is amazing. He hasn't had an asthma attack at all. He is seemingly feeling good. And yesterday I tweeted about it because it was so amazing. He played. He does not play, you guys. He does not play, but he played. He ran around and he was batting around a little catnip mouse that we have. He was batting around a ball. He was flishing all around and flicking upside down and he was playing. And he's been eating his kidney diet like such a good boy. And I have been diligent. I have been feeding him like maybe six to eight times a day, little kidney diet. And I make sure it's really palatable for him and fresh and good and making sure he has tons of water available, which I always was doing, but now I'm like giving him extra attention that I am just making sure that he is well taken care of and to the best of my ability. And I'm not gonna claim victory over anything. His He's in kidney failure. So essentially there's nothing I can do to stop that from being a reality. But if I can make him feel better and make him playful and his breath is so much better over the eight years that I've had him, his breath has been unimaginably bad. Like you can't, you've never smelled breath like his. I have tried so many different things and the antibiotic helped so much so that like he is, his breath smells like nothing. And before it smelled like a rotting corpse, <laughs> like horrifying. And now it smells like nothing. I am so unbelievably happy about it. I'm taking every small victory where they come. And the fact that he was playing, I can't even begin to describe what that did for me. I woke up this morning and I was just like, yes, this is a victory. This is something to celebrate. And whether or not it's going to stay, I don't know how much longer. I couldn't stop crying because I need him to be around for another, at least, I always said 10 more years. I need at least five out of him. I need it. I have to have it. So um, but he's down here snoozing right now. He looks comfy. He's making biscuits. What a good boy. And I am, I just am so happy that he's doing a little bit better and seemingly feeling better enough to play. He can't play normally because he's mostly blind, you know? He can't see toys, but he was playing with a toy. Okay, we don't have to talk about the kitty anymore. But um, that's one of the main reasons that I've been so MIA. I'll talk about it soon enough. I just have so much going on. And the thing is, is when my animals aren't well, I am unwell. <laughs> I can't have it be the case. Like I need them to be at 100% all the time. So when they're not, it's just absolutely soul crushing to me. And all of my attention goes to making sure that they are fine. That's just the kind of person that I am. I am like 100% at all times with my animals. And when he wasn't feeling well, well, you know what? I'm not well and I need to be gone making sure he's okay. My entire attention is just like following him around and making, do you feel okay? Are you okay? Are, why are you looking at me like that? Are you, are you sick? <laughs> I'm a freak. He's seemingly a little bit better and I'm going to take it. Okay, we don't have to talk about him anymore. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the eyes. I'm gonna go in with the Melt Rust palette and I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the shade Rubbish right here. Maybe a little bit of Erode and then Rust, Mar, and Rot. So I'm gonna take kind of all those matte shades. I'm just sort of dipping them all together and I'm gonna start putting that on the crease and then building it up from there and making sure that this area of my eye is really dark and matte because with the black of the mascara, when I've been doing that, oh, it looks so good.
kind of what I did the other day. And then I took a smaller brush like this one. This is the ColourPop E19. I'm gonna dip into a little bit of Mar and Rot and then like pat that here. Just to get that deepness down by the lash line. These are showing up a little bit patchy right now. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? I'm gonna take a little bit of those shades on that same brush, Rubbish, Mar, and Rot. Put those underneath. And then take a little bit of Rubbish and Erode. And then blend that out. Sort of like that. And then I'm gonna put like a brown liner on as well. It looks so nice with a minimal lash. Oh, tell me, do you guys do lashes as much as I do? Or do you feel like that's more of a YouTuber thing? So I absolutely hate my eyelash curlers. Do you guys have a recommendation for me? I would love to hear your recommendation. All I maybe it's not eyelash curlers. Maybe it's just me. But my eyelash curler, so I'm just using this one from NYX. I had, um, I can't remember, Japanesque one. Oh my God, they're all terrible. They just break on me, but all they do is crimp my lashes. That is it. They just crimp them and they look like absolute shit. You guys like, look at this. I'm going to show you. So other people are like, you need to do like quick pulses and like go down the length of your lash. It doesn't hold. It does not hold for me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It first of all, pulls up all my bottom lashes into it doesn't matter how careful I am. If I do like quick little pulses and then pull out and then quick little pulses, I just feel like I get five seconds of curl and then it, they just fall completely out. Maybe it's just my lashes. Maybe I need, I think I have one. I have never used it, I've never plugged it in, but I have like a heated lash curler. Maybe that's the answer. I know that some people like put their hair dryer on theirs. I'm just telling you, I don't know, man. I Mine either crimp and go straight up or they don't work at all. And even, it doesn't matter if I sit here with this on my lashes for like 45 minutes and they are like going straight up, the second I put mascara on, done. Like it's, I don't know, and I, I'm not trying to complain. I just, I would love to know if there's an actual eyelash curler out there that's actually good. The Shu Emura one, is that, am I saying that right? I've heard good things about it, but it's like small, so you have to do like sections at a time or something. You guys tell me. The last few times I've done my makeup, I've been using the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I really like the um, It Cosmetics Blowout, Lash Blowout, but lately I've been using this, so that's what I'm gonna use when I'm just doing mascara days, which has been a lot lately. And right when I put it on, it looks nice. Like, look how those are standing at attention. I feel like they look nice, but after like five minutes, they're just flat. I, I talked about this in my Instagram stories, but we have been over at the other house quite a lot. It's moving, it's going. Um, I have a feeling we're not gonna be able to move into it until probably realistically July or August, just with how everything's back ordered and everything's taking way longer to ship than normal. Had some things done to the house, like we put arches in. Oh, I am so happy with it. It looks so hobbity and good, you guys. I could cry. It looks so, so good. Oh my God, I could literally die a thousand deaths. It looks amazing in there. Looks like such a different house. We really changed things to make it our own and to give it such a unique feel to it. And I'm really, really excited with the progress. I can't wait for you guys to see it. I cannot wait to move into that place. It's so peaceful out there. We've been going out there recently and we've been like identifying plants because there's a lot of really cool plants in the yard. By the way, these are the eyes, like this is it, done. You can see that the lashes are already straight. My lashes are straight. Doesn't matter how much I curl them, you guys. It doesn't matter. This is the highlighter I'm gonna use. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Omrizi highlighter. This is one of my favorites. This is the one I used the other day and it looked really, really pretty. Because it's, you know, spring now, all the plants are blooming and all the trees and stuff that we didn't know what they were before that were all bare when we got the house, they're all blooming and it's so beautiful out there. It's green and lush, let me tell you. But we got this app called, I've talked about this on Twitter and it's called Picture This. And you guys recommended it to me in my Instagram DMs one day when I was asking you what a tree was. What a cool app. So when you first get it, it's gonna try to make you like pay for this app, pay for it. I just push the X on the top and it has never made me pay. It probably will get to the point when I'm like wanting to use it to identify like an unlimited amount of plants like it's going to make me buy the app but um if you just push the x when it pops up and says like do you want to do the paid version i just say no and then it just still lets me use the app it is amazing if you guys have never used this app before truly give it a try not sponsored <laughs> it's just an app where you can take a picture of any 
plant that you see out and about and it will identify it for you and if it's wrong it'll give you some other options as well and it also posts pictures and gives you like identifying factors of it and tells you everything about it and it's not wrong <laughs> i can tell you that much it's a really amazing app and it has helped us identify so many different plants on the property we have paradise apple trees we have pear trees a huge cherry tree which is already fruiting and it looks so amazing it's such a cool tree uh elderberries wisteria, lilacs. There's so many different plants on the property and we've been able to identify so many and it's just so fun to walk around. Like if you're going for a walk in the evening and you're like looking at all these really cool bushes and you're like, what is that? Whip out the app and it's so, so, so fun. I really gotta say, I mean, maybe I just like am re a real simple person. What a treat. It's so, so much fun. You can get lost and just discovering all the different types of things that are out there. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun, you guys. So highly recommend that app. And again, it's called Picture This. For my lips, I'm gonna use Mochalicious. Tap that in. And then Lunar Beauty's Dreamy Gloss. Oh, love this. It feels wrong not to be wearing lashes, I will be honest. It feels like my look is missing something, but that, that that's what no lashes looks are like lately. I'm gonna do a couple of faux freckles. And I did these the other day and I thought it was really cute with this look and it just sort of tied it all together. I'm not gonna do nearly as many as I did the other day. I think it kind of ties the look together because when the face is almost too perfect, I feel like it needs a little bit of texture on your skin to make these eyes pull in together. I knew I was missing something. I need to do the brown waterliner. You don't have to do this step, but I just like the smokiness that it brings and not adding that harshness of black. Oh yeah, that's what it needed. I knew it, I knew it. I feel something was off. This is the Ellie Girl Glide On Gel Liner. These are seriously so good, you guys. They're amazing. This is the finished look, fast. The thing about not doing lashes is if you're not gonna do them, it literally goes by so unbelievably fast. And I feel like the look is still really pretty. And I feel like this is what most people are going to do. A lot of people don't wear false lashes on the daily, I don't think. I do because I just love the way they make my eyes look so big and open and doe-eyed. And I just feel like they add a finished element to it, but you don't have to do it. And I feel like sometimes on YouTube, we get a little bit stuck in the rut of feeling like if a look doesn't have lashes, it's not done enough. And I even have that feeling right now as I'm sitting here like, I'm missing something. I'll like toss a pair of lashes. I won't actually stick them on, but I'll show you what this look would look like with them. These are the Jet Setter lashes from Coco. So it could look, I mean, these are humongous, but you can see it would just like, boom, it really enhance the eyes. But I like the way it looks like this. It almost looks like kind of grungy and understated. I think it's kind of fun. And that's it for the makeup look. I really just wanted to chat with you guys. I have so much more to talk about. I mean, I could sit here and chat for literally hours. I miss you guys so much. I did want to say that as things have gone on, so I made a video the other day. I'm really judging myself hardcore on YouTube right now. Don't ask me why. I feel like I go through these ebbs and flows and I feel like as my platform has grown, I really have backed off of talking about a lot of things that I like talking about. I don't know why I'm like that, but I used to be really super open and talk about all kinds of things and get really, really deep on here. And I feel like the more my platform has grown, the more I've backed off of that. And it's not even a conscious thought. It's more of a subconscious, like, yeah, you're oversharing. Yeah, nobody fucking cares. I do that and I don't know why. I have this weirdest thing where I feel like as I'm talking, even if you do care, my mind is telling me they don't fucking care. Shut up, nobody cares. It's like the weirdest thing and it's, so detrimental because instead of sitting down and just filming what I want to film, putting it out there and being like, a video is a video and it's done and it's great. I am like, nobody cares. Why are you telling the story? Nobody cares. Uh, they don't care. And so, I, so many times I'll film things and just never upload them because I'm way too harshly judging them. I filmed a total video the other day, just sort of like vloggy style, follow me around, hang out with me when I was like picking up the house and I was like showing you guys my cats and everything, judging it too harshly. I haven't uploaded it. And I don't know why I'm like that now. And it's so irritating because I can see myself doing it. And I had all of these ideas in my head, like, okay, Stop being overly edity with your videos. Stop being overly critical of them. Just upload, just do it. And I was like that at the beginning of the year. I was like, I'm gonna upload more and stop, and stop overthinking everything that I do. And it has only gotten worse. And I'm still in therapy for anybody that's wondering. Yes, I still am. And it is helping, but I, man, it's gotten really bad to the point where I'm like, even this video right now, 
at this whole time that I've been filming this, I'm not sitting here thinking like, yeah, it's totally fine, just upload it. I'm like, yeah, this is a scrap video. I talked about my cat, nobody cares. I talked about um, a plant app, nobody cares. So just throw this one away, start over again and try again another day. And I have to stop doing that. So that's why we are here today. I just wanted to sit down and chat with you guys. I'm like having this sort of competition mindset with other YouTubers. I'm watching their content. And I'm like, really, really good. Love that intro. Oh, I love how you did that. And you know what? You're just, I love what you're saying. But you, Christy, when you say it, ugh, shut up. The internet right now has become a place where I am every single, and I don't know why I'm like this because I'm literally somebody who does not care generally at all. I don't care what people think about me generally right now. Oh my God, I care so much. And I don't know what's happening. I honestly, I'm watching people on the internet. I'm seeing their lives. I'm seeing what they're going through. I'm seeing how they're posting so consistently and being so like positive every day and like getting up and exercising and doing all this stuff. And as stupid as it is, because I know not everybody is doing that. It makes me feel like such an, an unbearable piece of shit when I am like, yeah, well, you posted one video last week. Really good. Okay, well, cool. Why don't you pat yourself on the back for it? I'm really wanting to get out of that. Just stop being so overly critical of what I post and just post. And I'm sorry that I haven't been, I, I haven't announced it or talked about it or anything. And nobody's hounding me. Nobody is hounding me about it except for myself. And so I, I wanna do it for myself. I miss posting. I miss feeling like really connected with you guys on here and talking about stuff and not overly worrying about things. I used to just get off work, sit down, turn the camera on when I was in my bedroom and just be doing makeup. And now I feel like if it's not some production with the highest quality, with the best 24 frames per second with a creamy slow-mo, it's not good enough to post to YouTube. And that's just frankly not true. So I don't know why I'm being that way. It's And I think it's just honestly, the growth of online when hardly anybody's watching, you just like that, eh, whatever. But when a bunch more people are watching and people are like, come on, post, I'm like, I can't. And it's just an excuse. I absolutely can. And I have for years, I've been doing YouTube since 2012. I've been doing this for a really long time. I've literally posted hundreds of videos to this channel. Why now is it starting to feel like I'm like nobody cares? Of course you care if you subscribed. But for some reason, I have literally gotten to this point where I am like, if it's not movie quality, they don't wanna see it. Who said that? None of you literally ever have said that to me. Maybe it's just subconscious excuse. I don't know. I could be, I'm kind of an excuse maker. That was a rant. And it didn't even mean to be a rant. I, I, I enjoyed sitting down and chatting with you guys today. I had fun also trying on the Savage X Fenty stuff and just feeling pretty and nice and doing something for myself that's not just sitting around self-loathing, okay? I don't know why I do it. Love you guys so much. I thank you guys so much for watching, hanging out with me. Please subscribe if you have not yet. I am almost at 1 million subscribers. That sounds like a laughable sentence to say because I can't even fathom that number. That number is just some number in the abyss. It's like when you're like, oh, quadrillion, billion, squillion. Like th the number doesn't, a million people have clicked the subscribe, almost have clicked the subscribe button. Okay, what? I, I, it doesn't matter how long I've been doing this. It doesn't matter if the growth has been steady, fast. It's just like, it. I say the numbers and I like laugh afterwards because it doesn't sound real, but I appreciate you so much. And I thank you so much for subscribing and for hanging out and for still being here with me. All right, well, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye.